Okay, so I've managed to grab Ian Russell here on the Avid Carp stand to talk a little bit about the Sooner Baits 24-7 range. Now Ian, I am a dumbass match angler. I've all right, that. that is definitely true. <laughs> when I go fishing, I lob it in and my rod just gets pulled off. There's none of this sit in a chair. Well, I think you're being unkind. Chill out luck, do you yeah. know what I mean? But what we've got here is an incredible range of different size boilies and I don't really know anything about them. So if I run them through with you, are you going to tell me a little bit about each one? Mate, yeah. We've got some 15 mil pop-ups there, mate. Tell us a bit Standard about them. Standard pop-ups, you know, if you want a buoyant bait. That's, yeah. I mean, with these, I will use these even on a zig. Anything that's up in the water from an inch off the bottom and to, uh, to, to whoever, uh, whoever deep the water is, really. So, yeah. buoyant. Boy, you know, I know that's an obvious statement yeah. uh, to be said, but pop up is boring. Totally it, floats, so. you know, yep. yeah, don't have to do anything with and it. And these yeah. will stay up for, you shouldn't have to keep them stand up for days, but because hopefully you'd have had a bite, but yeah, yeah. they're that boy. 20 minutes for you. That's a long 15 enough, usually. Right, right, 15 fair enough, but right, right. No, I mean, the, the modern rigs, the, you've got two types of rigs nowadays, one with the bottom baits, one with the pop-ups, uh, and they tick all the boxes, And mate. 15 mil, that's a standard size, would you say? This is probably the most popular size that's is out it? there. Right, yeah. right. You know, a lot, lot of the bait rolls don't like making the smaller ones anyway, so... <laughs> but no, you, you have... You, you know, most anglers will have half a dozen different types of sort of 14, 15 mil pop-ups in their armoury. Right. You know, just different colours. Right. I think I got that one. I thought I thought I might I thought I might understand that one. Yeah. This is this is gonna when I get start getting confused. Right, look, 15 mil super chods. Right, super chods. Give us that here. They are it's very <laughs> popular nowadays to use something what they call a chod rig, which is yeah. like four to five foot of lead core or leadless lead core, like our pin down, and a tiny little hook ring on it. I know that's uh, if I'm patronising you. No, patronise me, yeah. No, I don't know, I don't know. Tiny little fluorocarbon hook link with a curve in it, which yeah. is it's emulating like a three or four inch hook actually. Yeah. And that runs up and down the, the lead core. Yeah, I've seen I mean, that, yeah. The more buoyant the bait, the more effective the rig. Okay. So with the super chods are slightly are made up obviously more buoyant than Incredibly the normal. Incredibly buoyant, is These that what are they are? really you what you're what you're hoping is the pin down or the lead core you're using is helping counterbalance the bait. Yeah. I and see. All, what you want is that a chod is to fish on top of the chod, which is not you know, we yeah. Yeah, crap, rubbish. silt, rubbish. You got and it. you only want it to just gently lay on it. You know, I fish chods on top of sort of six foot of weed in eight foot of water and you can see it all, it's just laid lovely. Yeah. So the more see, that's, that's interesting that is because I've done a little bit of like basic carp fishing and I would have just used the pop up in that situation. Well, so it it's obviously interesting be, to know yeah, it wouldn't I mean, be quite right, say, would it? No, the, uh, the more buoyant the bait and the chod rig the better it is. Right, right. But you've got a tiny little hook link, you want it up and in. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you also want it to sit so gently and obviously then you've got if you're leaving it out in an area where they may visit in five or six hours, you want it to retain his yeah, you are. You want 100% confidence that your bait's right, yeah. and that's what you're getting from the supercharge. Yeah. Right, okay. That's interesting as well with the 24-7 while we've got it here, the colour. Very light in colour. lovely and creamy colour, isn't yeah, it? So yeah. it's very, you know, visual aspects been bought into it as well. Yeah, which I think, if you're from match angling, I know that is so important, yeah. the visual aspect of your bait. Right, okay, well, while we're on that then, we've got some wafters here, mixed washout wafters. Right, this gives you, um, obviously, choice of colour. A lot of the more heavily stocked venues, it is all about colour. I've been on venues and you'll get bites. All, we'll talk about the waft a bit in a minute. Yeah. The colour is, I've been on venues and you cannot buy a bite on white. You change it. I mean, you guys are changing all the time. Oh, constantly. all the time. You know yeah, the importance yeah. of, of one little change, one little tweak can win a match. It's not too different now in carp fishing. The lakes that we generally fish are so heavily stocked with greedy fish, but a colour can make a difference. You know, as I've started to say, I've been on venues where white will not buy you a bite all day long. Change the pink, yeah. same swim, same clip on the line, and yeah. you're getting bites. That's away. amazing because that happens in match fishing exactly like you say. We can fish a red bait and it cannot get you a bite. You put a white bait yeah. on, you'll get one, or vice versa. But you the know. smaller the fish in your fishing, would you say they're more finicky? Because I don't think carp are. You, you know, I agree with that. When we fish for carp, we can fish a lot stronger lines and yep. things like that. So yeah, you're right. They aren't. But so you would, so you wouldn't. Ironically, you wouldn't imagine that a, tight, a, a slight change in colour yeah. would affect a very greedy. So what fish, about the wafter element, though? Well, the wafter element is totally opposite to the pop-ups. Now I want something on the bottom. Yeah. But I want it to negate buoyancy, which aids the rig to go further back. So it's counterbalancing the hook. Yeah. Just about. It's either softly resting on the silt or whatever it's on on the debris, but also when the fish comes in. It 
it will come up a bit. The fish will spot that one first. And also, I mean, there's loads of different percentages in carp fishing, as in your fishing, that make it successful. The further back you hook them, the better, obviously. Yeah, and with yeah. a wafter, as they come in picking up the heavy bottom baits, your freebies, this one will shoot up further, and you're unhooking them with full tips now instead of popping it out the lip. Yeah, so, I get it. You know, I it's get rig it. mechanics more than bait. Yeah, yeah, to get uh, it's going to help you with the I would have said as well, like you say, you can almost imagine when a carp comes in, it kicks everything up, and your wafter finishes up settling back down on yep. top rather than getting covered yep. up by any crap. Yep. So, yeah, you know, I might use that this when, week. Well, when you get two or three carp come in, if you're in a situation where you can watch them, exactly what you're saying, Lee, they don't sneak in quietly. The, as they come in, the water's still moving past them. Yeah. Everything is kicked up. Yeah. So, you and know, that's the one left as well. One left. What's with the washed out colour just while we're in there? I've, I've seen a lot it's about that. It's in vogue. It's in yeah, vogue. I mean, yeah. years ago, uh, we were doing it to mimic a bait that's been in the water a long time. Now yeah. It's just everyone sells them anyway. Same sort of principle. Yeah. But yeah. When the but it works. Now, it works, doesn't it? You yeah, catch yeah, fish on them. So. And it's, you'll probably go back to bright colours in a year. Yeah, 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 I understand Curiosity that. you've got the carp. So then we've got some oozing pop-ups. Now, these are quite interesting. These have worked in match fishing, these as in some difficult situations. Oh, I've done situations. all right on these, but I've done all right on these more so, and I couldn't tell you why, on the zig situation. These, obviously, from oozing, yeah. the bait's there, and yeah. you've got a flow of colour coming yeah. out of the bait and yeah. flavour and attractor. But I've done really well on these with zigs, rather than, you know, when you've got a better bait, you've got a pop-up in the middle of it, you've got loads of attraction coming off Yeah. There. This is, I fish these in isolation, in my fishing, not, yeah. not anywhere No, else. no. And you can imagine now uh, a bait sitting six foot off the bottom in 12 foot of water, and you're then covering the six to 12 foot bit as well. Because you've the got this tail, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, attraction, yeah. It's, you know, it's just one single bait, yeah. is doing what a better bait. So what would you say that's better in, say, clearer water when you're fishing for yeah, like one or two bites? I mean, or? The oozing bit is, is, is an attraction as well. So in coloured water, it will still be giving off yeah, uh, flavour you know, and smell yeah, and yeah. attraction. But in, in, in clear water, Obviously, it's something they're going to yeah, spot yeah. from a way off. Yeah, like, so know. something to try. So, I mean, it's worth having a pot with you because, You've again, got just like switching know. the other one, yep. you could make the switch and it could be all the difference. Well, you know, carp fishing on most of the venues now that are so prolific isn't too different to what you're doing. If you keep bringing the changes, the results will come. Yeah. So you've got to have a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's it interesting. That's interesting. Because it's the same in match fishing. If you bring the changes, yep. you definitely do get results. Well, right, we've also got... Well, we've got the mixed washout pop-ups in different colours. So the same as the, the pop-ups, but obviously principle. a colour choice there. Yes. So I understand that. And somebody's put some golf balls in this one, mate. It's like 18... Give us it here. Right, the only time... I mean, it, it, it's a pop-up size that isn't uh, used a lot, but if you're on a venue full of fish that you want to catch, and I don't, yeah. i.e. bream, <laughs> tench, rather, yeah, yeah. then it's worth sticking a, a bit of a gobstopper on. Yeah. Because the only thing that's going to get that... Well, carp. it's interesting because I've done a little bit of canal carp fishing and I've been using like 12s and 15s thinking yeah. to myself, well, I'll never catch a bream. Yeah. And I can't believe how many bream I catch, oh, but I didn't even know at 18. Mate. So when you think about it, if a bream with a small mouth will have a 15, yeah. there's no reason why a great big carp wouldn't have a big bait. You know, like I've used boilies in up to 30 mil for carp, not, not pop ups um, to be fair. Yeah. They've got huge mouths yeah. and they'll bump them yeah, and they'll they'll factor again. Again, so it's visual as well, and yeah. it's a big thing, isn't it's it? Big yeah. Thing, yeah. Yeah. You know, I totally agree that small baits will get you more bites on, on most days because it's what yeah. their food items are related to. Yeah. But if you've got nuisance fish in our world, which isn't in yours, an 18 mil pop-up would generally eradicate any bream and tench. And you'll, yeah. Plus the rig then looks a bit bulky and that, so... I understand. Yeah. Really only, you know, if you're going to get a bite, it's usually a carp. Well, I know you've been bagging up on the 24-7 range for about three years. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So, well, the, only, uh, the only problem is, mate, now everybody can have it. Well, we've got to start looking <laughs> at the next one. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, look, 24-7's out now. There's some great boilies in the range. There's some great feed boilies as well. Thanks, Ian, for running me through there. Welcome, mate. Now I know what I'm doing. Even I might catch a car. I don't know about that too much. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Cheers.